But yes, 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 welcome back to another episode of Money Matrix with Blocks to Bags. I'm your boy Seb. I'm your boy Emilio. And we got what? Mickey. And we're about to go in into exit planning, but make it for life. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about something that we like to call exit planning in the world of business, but we've kind of um, done this on our own terms. Now, usually when you talk about exit planning for business and CEOs, that usually refers to what happens at the end of my business? Like what's the end goal? Like what happens afterwards? And usually it's around like the sale of a business. That's what we like to call an exit. But today we want to break it down for the everyday person, yeah? What happens like after I finish my job or what happens mm. after I do this or that? Like, so let's, let's break it down. We're going to be talking about pensions. We're going to be talking about life insurance. And we're also going to be talking about making investments in the kind of market and how you can kind of set yourself up for success in the future and what you need to be doing now. So lads, who wants to kick us off? He's got, yeah, yeah mean, you've been excited, I'm, yeah? Because the biggest conversation piece with exit is retirement. Yeah. Mm. And one of the biggest issues is not enough people even know what their retirement age is. Let's yeah. talk about it. And most of us, we all know with the government, the retirement age is probably going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or older and older and yeah, older. Yeah, look at France right you now. Just talk- <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so even by that same token, the first conversation piece is what time are you even going to be retiring? What age? Mm. Yeah. And working backwards. So even as a coach, in terms of helping different people across different like facets in life from relationships to wealth, as well as just personal happiness, it's important to think about the end as you're working on the present. So having that end in mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So a lot of us as humans, we may not think about retirement until we're maybe 10 years away, maybe mm. that most. 15 years away, or maybe even five years away. Yeah. But there's a lot you can get done if you're mindful of it right now. Most of us feel like what stops us is we need to get to a certain point earning wise before mm-hmm. you can start thinking about the end in mind, even though you can start a lot sooner. Agreed. That's a really good point. I think like sometimes a lot of us also, I think it's really hard to think about something that's so far away, right? Like. Who wants to plan 40 years in advance, right? You're trying to hustle or grind and you want to get results in the short term. But, you know, like time moves. And I think like thinking about those long term things and trying to do things in, you know, not right now, especially when you're like thinking about long term planning, it doesn't take a lot and doesn't take as much as we might think. And really, sometimes that kind of conversation gets a bit lost, doesn't it? Fact. There was a sick book that touches on that same concept called Start Late, Finish Rich mm. by David Bark. Cold book, because most of the time, the people I speak to, they may feel like, oh, it's a bit too late for me to start doing this advice right now. There will be no point I might as well just continue unless I'm hit a windfall or something mm-hmm. of them sorts. Okay. And like, uh, one of the key things that we were discussing was this concept of starting small and putting small bits of kind of money away from right now. 100%. And even with that, the biggest step or the first step is one, acknowledge if you started late, forgive yourself. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Be, yourself, be kind. Oh, please. Yeah, don't be yourself all about, oh, all this information I'm learning now, I should have done when I was 19 and I'm 37 or 42 now. Fun, start, start with forgiving yourself. And then from that point, it often starts with just really looking at what you are spending and compare that to what it looks like Mm -hmm. if you've invested it over a period of time. Yeah. So let's say most of the common conversations is maybe a cup of coffee. And (sighs) a cup of coffee, for those who are massive coffee drinkers, that might come up to maybe a hundred pound a month. But that hundred pound a month over 20 years invested with say a 7% annual return, is significantly more. Let's highball the number and let's say it's something like 50, 60, 80 grand. Yeah. yeah. Maybe even more. You know, I'm a, I'm a, let me add a bit of context to that, right? So I was, I've been thinking about this specific thing quite a bit recently, actually. Um, and so just obviously, you know, we often have to look back, right, to think about the future. And so um, I used my, my best friend, ChatGPT. So I was like, all right, let's say I had 20, 20K in 2011, right? And let's say I put it and 
put it into, let's say, 15, 16 different stocks, blue chip stocks, right? What's a blue chip stock, by the way? Blue chip stocks tend to be like tier one companies, right? Companies with- Apples, Googles. Apples, Googles, Microsoft, the big banks, things like that, right? So you choose 20 of those, yeah, that you're gonna put- Exactly, yeah. So then I asked her, right, over 10 years, right, compounded, how much would that, my 20K investment in 2011, how much would that be by 2021? Go on. Go on. Oh, okay, guys, okay, let's guess. Right. Let's have a guess. Let, let, okay. Oh. If I had to guess, maybe 150. Oh, okay, 150K, cool. yeah? yeah? Go on, sir. I would say probably lower, like maybe like 60K, like a free extra term, maybe like 60K, 300, uh, yeah? Close, you guys were close. 2.2 mil. Oh, <laughs> we wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, no. You're saying 20K invested, was that 10 years ago? 20K 20. invested in, in, in 2011. 2011. Right, could have been up to 2.2. Obviously there's a couple of caveats, right? So it depends on the companies, Yeah. right? And that's not always gonna be guaranteed, but the numbers are, the, the thing that's important and in, interesting about that is one, the compounding, that's the thing that really why like small amounts of money invested over a long duration actually end up being huge amounts of money, right? Because when you invest money and it continues to grow, it, what's growing is the compound, right? So that's a, a compound investing. That's really like the, the secret source to unlocking a lot of value. Um, if you think about interest rates, right? Let's say you had invested, you had a thousand pounds and you made, let's say 5% interest a year on it, right? In the first year, you only get a thousand plus five percent, but the second year, it's a thousand and what fifty pounds plus five percent. If you didn't add any more money, so the compounding alone, right, actually contributes it to like a significant growth. And then when you start considering things like the continuous payment into these um, investment vehicles you're using, then honestly, it's like, yeah, big big numbers. And that's the biggest thing you've just mentioned because even with the investment side of things, people may feel like they have to start with a massive number Mm -hmm. and not realize that the way they get to a massive number in terms of how much they're investing over time is just growing bit by bit. So you might start off with even 10 pounds a month, but over that period of time, you could end up be investing maybe 1,000, 2,000 a month, if not more, depending on how you continue your wealth journey and just making a point to invest because in that same context, I will definitely be a testament to watching other people's earnings dramatically increase Mm. as they're becoming more conscious of the end in mind. So just being aware that, oh, the lifestyle I want 40 years from now has a number attached. Mm. So now all of a sudden you have more motivation whether it's spending more energy and time in a business or side hustle he's working on, to even having the courage to ask for a promotion mm. and extra money from the job that you work at. Yeah, I mean, that's a really, really good point. I think as well, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to finance and investing, especially within our communities, right? I think part of it is that, that there is a lack of awareness and education in terms of why, you know, this is really often why there's a big wealth gap and often there is a big wealth disparity among social classes, but also racial classes, right? That financial literacy piece is often missing. So often we, especially in our communities, we associate wealth and uh, financial attainment through income generation, whether that's through a business you've created or through employment. But actually often, if you actually look at the history, recent history over the last 20, 30 years, for instance, right? The things that have gained the most value are assets, right? So if you bought a house in 2010, very, very easy, that house could be 100% up right now, right? Like it could have doubled in value. And I know for sure where I live, for example, I think so in a previous episode, we talked about this, right? When I was growing up, my best friend, I remember, um, his parents bought a house really close to where I now live, right? And I think they bought it for like 300K, three bedroom house, a Bermondsey area, 300K, right? That house now easily worth 600K, right? That is asset price inflation, right? And you can only get that if you are invested in assets. 
Wealth, on the other hand, sorry, uh, employment, on the other hand, right? Wages have stagnated, or if they've gone up, they've gone up very little in that time. So that's why like, you've got to think about investment, not just only about you know, making money in the long term, but it's also about making sure that you're on that kind of boat when the, uh, when the, when the, when the uh, levels go up, you know, it brings you up with it, as opposed to you kind of just having to bring yourself up on your own through things you, 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 know, you create or work on. 100%, and even just thinking with the end in mind, the inflation issue, I don't think it's going anywhere. So yeah, the, facts, fact that, facts, facts. the fact that most people's price increase in terms of their salary will n- probably never be over the current rate of inflation. It doesn't ma- ma- to me, it doesn't matter what the Bank of England or other institutions try and do to bring it down. The fact that's going to be a constant thing means it's even more important. Even the fact where many years ago, decades ago, should I say, you could just have your money in a bank and not do anything with it. And that was seen as a viable investment strategy. And another thing as well was um, we created a calculator that we're happy to share, or we will be sharing with the audience here about what does your money look like if you just did nothing with it over a zero to 40 year period compared to if you just invested and generated a certain percentage annual return. So the average over that period of time, maybe seven to ten percent, but even then, it's significantly more than what you could do if you just did nothing with it, or you was worried. Because I think that's probably the biggest issue with exit yeah. planning. A lot of people are scared with some of the different ways in which you can invest, whereas mutual funds, index funds, stocks, trades, so real estate as well. So there's quite a few factors that I can understand would be the reason why people don't think enough about exit planning. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, I love that. So we've been talking about exit planning. We've been talking about how you can make investments, especially in the stock market from now. I mean, if you missed the 2010 wave, there's still there's still another wave yeah, coming on yes. by the dip, that kind of vibe. Um, another thing that we wanted to talk about was pensions. Now, I know that my mom, as soon as I started working, was like, yo, go get that pension, grab it with both hands and don't let go. I was like, mom, why, why do I need a pension? Like, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm gonna be rich anyways. I'm gonna be so, like, let's, let, 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 let's break it down. I know we've had a lot of these conversations like with our family, like, and how important the pension was, especially like a couple of years ago, let's just say pre-financial crisis. But yeah, I just wanted to deep dive in, 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 into pensions and whether it's like still worth it for, you know, Gen Z millennial workforce today, what else they could be doing with their money and, and what actually they do with, with a pension, like. Yeah. Valid question, valid, valid talking point. I think, especially when you're younger, let's say you're working at a company that has a pension scheme. In your mind, you're not, you're thinking to yourself, I'm probably not gonna be at this company for that long anyway. Yeah. And I have my own dreams to do X, Y, Z. And even with the pension, a lot of us in the short term can feel like, that's just money being taken away from what I was going to do with it right now. So I think not only is it a big thing of pensions, especially organizations that have a high match rate in terms of what percentage they will pay on top of your contribution. Another thing that doesn't get spoken about enough is voluntary contributions Mm -hmm. to your pension, especially if you're self-employed. Because yeah, a lot of us, we might get a business contract. Let's put a number on it, 10,000 pounds. We're thinking, the sun's always gonna shine, Mm. but they're always gonna be rainy days. And another thing as well that people don't necessarily realize is the how the level of the fact that putting money into your pensions voluntarily means you end up paying less tax. Exactly, that's that's the real, I think that's, the, the two really key points you hit, especially in employment, right, is the matched element of it, right? So the government, there is a certain amount that employers have to match in the UK, right? So uh, minimums, I think 5%, it used to be eight, but I think now it might be 5%. So 5% of your salary you pay into the private pension, your employer pays 5%, right? So you already get 5% of your salary given to you on top just for putting 5% of your salary in. But the second thing is actually often, when you put the 5% in, let's say you're making uh, 30 grand, right? Um, It's not gonna be, 5% Five percent of thirty grand. It's going to be a bit less because you don't get taxed on those pension contributions. So it's actually a way to reduce the amount of tax you pay. When mm-hmm. the way that it works is 
when you are earning your monthly wage, right, the pension gets taken out before you get taxed at the gross level. So then the tax you're paying is wow. after that contribution has been taken out. So essentially there's a, a couple of ways you're winning, right? You're putting some money in that 5%, then your, your employer is matching that, and then you're, you're paying less tax. And you know the thing about pensions is, as we started at the top of the, the show, right, is they go into pools of investment, which would then be tracked over a period of time. And on the flip side of it, this is why pensions are important. In the UK, st state pension is 185 pounds a week, right? Can you imagine living on 185 pounds a week? Oh, yeah. yeah. 180, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what are you so, gonna so, do with that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't so, care how many concessions yeah. and how many discounts you get as a yeah, pensioner. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna I do can't that? imagine. Yeah, I could imagine it. And that's the biggest thing as well, because by that same token, people just only think about a state pension. Mm. And the fact that you have other flexibilities with different forms of pensions. And you know what? Because another thing I speak to you on a holistic point about anyone I work with as a coach, the fact that one, we are an amalgamation of different versions of ourselves. Mm. So let's say you're 40, there was a 21 year old version of yourself. There was a 16 year old version of yourself, eight year old version of yourself. And they have different characteristics, different things about them. And one of the things I get people to speak on or get people to work on is the concept of trying to take care of the future version of yourself by what you do now. So there's things you can do right now. It can be just some, something simple as like changing your health routine and fitness so that the 40 year old version of you can still walk without feeling any form of pain or in the joints or anything like that. And by that same token, who you are now is also a reflection of how the younger versions of yourself took care of you. Mm. So even with who I am, there's a lot of things I'm grateful for that the younger versions of me actually did. So even with my journey as a coach, that came because the 14 year old version of me just loved reading even though that's all he did at the time, nothing else in terms of anything as far as self-development or wealth, but just that fragment is what really helped me. So even with other people, just saving 10 pounds a month right now may end up five years from now becoming you investing a hundred or a thousand pounds a month. But it all started from what you might have considered a very small point in the, in the now rather than thinking too much about the future or regressing or feeling upset about the past. I think, and I think that's the, that's the, the like, the really important part, right, is I think what you said, I completely agree with thinking about life holistically, right? Just as you think about your, thinking about your stuff overall, not just about your financial things separately to your health versus your happiness, right? To, to, to think about them as collectively, what are the things I need to do to look after myself as a, a whole person, as opposed to just bits of my life, right? And that's why, and, and you know, the point you made about reading, right? I think I look at my life, right? And where, where my career is and stuff like that. And there's a lot of things where I got to the place I got to, not intentionally, but through some investments I made, right? Like you said, reading or doing X or y, y or whatever it might be, right? And those little investments compounded over a period of time, right? to get, put me in the position I'm in right now, just as money co invested over a period of time will put you in a better financial situation, just as you know, regularly working out or looking after your health will put you in a much more better health situation, right? So that all of these things, I think, and, and that's the really, really like, the main piece of it is that all of the things that we think about in life, they all have a kind of similar trajectory Right, uh, investing and doing it um, consistently over a period of time, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's your health, whether it's finance, right? That is the best way to guarantee success as opposed to the lottery of getting something without any logic or whatever, right? Like, oh, just something bangs or something. Yeah, the hell Mary. Right? Yeah. And, and the thing is, long time investing, whatever it might be, the way I think about it is it's like a seatbelt, right? It costs me very little to do, but the payout is gonna be significant, right? And when I need it. And so I think I really like that point you made about the holistic kind of way of thinking about this. 
I love that. I love that. I love that. So we've spoken about investing, especially in the stock market. We've spoken about pensions. Now let's maybe like round it off with a little bit about like life insurance. Mm. Question. Have any of you ever spoken about life insurance to your family? It was not a conversation brought up in my family. Okay, yeah. What That's about you? Same. same. I, I have never, ever had a conversation about life insurance with anyone in my family. And it's, it's, kind, of, um, it's kind of interesting because when we talk about exit planning, like life insurance is pretty much the insurance that you can take out if something was to happen to you, which can help sustain your family members on a similar salary or sort of financial income that you are kind of on. And I'm just getting some stats here from um, ULife, which is actually a company in, in Notion's portfolio, hold tight ULife, um, they're a cool, cool company, but they said only 30% of people in the UK have life insurance. Mm. Now, is this like a conversation that we need to have more in the UK or like, why do you think like people are scared to have that conversation around like life insurance? Because it's scary, man. <laughs> you want yeah. to think about dying. hundred <laughs> percent. And it's, it's what's interesting as well. You don't start getting the newsletter, like the, the, the news um, letters or the, the letters period in the post until someone in your family is like reaching retirement age. Mm. So it's almost a level of, we want you to think about this once you've already reached retirement age rather than, right now yeah. and they're not realizing that there's so many nuances and intricacies to life insurance as to why you should be doing it right now regardless of your age like one of the factors that's not even touched about is if you're actually perfectly healthy yeah that means you can end up paying far less contributions on a monthly basis compared to if you're already having a illness exactly. yeah. in which that might be the first time you think about life insurance exactly. yeah. so even that element is things that we can use to get ahead. Facts, 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 facts. And um, did you know that for people, especially under like the age of 30, you can actually get life insurance from like 10 pounds a month. Man. Yeah, it's, very, it's become very, very accessible with the technology and some of like the startups and things out there. It's become super accessible for anyone to like go on the internet, search for life insurance policy and like get some life insurance mm. because in this life, man, you never know. We're grateful for the life that we have, but in these kind of crazy times, I think it's important to really think ahead and really think about your kind of family. Because as you said, you know, when you're healthy, you never really think about it. It's only when you're ill that you start to actually think, okay, cool. What measures can I kind of put in place? Yeah. So yeah, it's that thing around just planning ahead and like having those kind of conversations. Yeah. And I think also, like, I feel like if you're, to a degree, if you're, you know, employed, you get a bit a bit more protection, right? Like, um, and a lot of, perhaps is only for like, you know, corporate jobs, mm -hmm. but a lot of jobs I've had, right? They come with uh, life insurance policies, yeah. right? That that usually they're free. They they mm -hmm. you're, you're just you just auto enroll into it. So I think especially with um, people who are, you know, working for themselves, uh, running their own businesses, contractors and stuff like that, right? I think it's even more important because really that kind of um, buffer does not exist at all. And you want to make sure, and, and also we talk about life insurance, but it's not just life insurance, right? There are different types of things that can happen to you that can incapacitate you and put you out of the workforce, right? And there's insurance for that, for example, that will pay out a certain amount of money close to like, you know, 50, 60, 70% of your income. For example, if you get a long-term debilitating illness or that, mm -hmm. and again, I think obviously psychologically, there's not things we want to think about. Yeah. But as you guys were saying, right, it's better to kind of, uh, swallow the bitter pill and think about that now than have to like be in a situation mm -hmm. where you know you are out of options and you can't really do much yeah. and especially this compared to even you know something like pensions where we feel like we have a bit more control of what we are doing yeah right? this is a complete lottery what happens to you right you never know the things that can happen so again having that seatbelt right is only, I think, in my opinion, anyway, is going to give you more options to take more risks in life, to do, to pursue, you know, the businesses and the projects yeah. you want to do without that feeling of like, oh, I don't have any security. I don't have any kind of, you know, thing that will protect my family and my loved ones and, and you know, God forbid, in horrific circumstances. And that's, the, I think that right there is a very, very, very 
strong point and also not realizing that life is not about what you say or do it's about who you are so if you try to like save a whole like a whole lot within the space of two years versus just being a saver yes as a habit yes. and way of life over your lifetime you're gonna get a far different outcome and even with that as well in terms of financial advice there's so many different strategies from the fact that with a life insurance you can get a potential loan out of your life insurance and well, yeah, yeah and that in itself is far less interest than the traditional loan mm. and even the fact that there's so much nuance to learn but just making a lifestyle of let me just learn these things yeah. for example um the difference between term life insurance and whole life insurance mm -hmm. Where for those of you who don't know, term life insurance is whereby you pay the premiums between a certain period of time, say 10 to 30 years. And if that time passes, you don't get any of the contribution, like you don't get any of the money from the contributions you made. Mm -hmm. Normally, as a result, those premiums are shorter um, or smaller in number in terms of what you pay on a monthly basis compared to whole life, where it's virtually guaranteed, mm -hmm. where you doesn't matter what age you pass away, you're still going to be taken care of. Never mind the fact that there's great advice about putting that money and setting up in a trust so that with that trust, it's not an issue where your loved ones have to pay inheritance tax. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's... That's maybe, it, maybe that's one for another. Actually. Yeah, I think well, that one trust, is trust, another, trust and trust one, babies. Yeah, that, yeah. But the one thing I think you said that is, if I, if the, if I was gonna say, there's one key takeaway from what we talked about today, right? Is as much as we all, no, I don't want to talk for everyone else, but as much as like there is this idea, goal setting is the critical thing in life, right? I think it's much more about identity, right? Like as you said, right? It's not being someone who is gonna save a set of money. I don't want to save this amount. I am a saver, I do this, not just for a specific goal, but because it's part of my lifestyle. And really that then starts to kind of build the habit and also really just actually your worldview starts to change, right? Because if you make, let's say three grand a month and you're a saver and you automatically take out 10, 10, 10K, right? You start thinking your salary, when you start calculating how much money you're gonna get is you're already calculating at 2,700. You don't you don't even think about the 300 you, you automate, cause that is, you're a saver. And that's just a thing that you do with your money. And really I think that's a critical thing for how we should think about the future. And also probably about how we think about a lot of other things we do. Yeah, and just a way to apply the calculator was talking about a hundred pounds a month over 20 years at an annual rate of return at 7% mm -hmm. is over 52,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So with that cup of coffee, what do you want more? The, the cup of coffee or the, 52, <laughs> or the 50 racks <laughs> over 20 years? I don't know, I'm, I'm taking. I don't know, I'm a coffee drinker, so nah, I'm joking. But ah, even ah, then, ah, right, ah, that ah, might be the I difference. The caffeine, but know. that might be the difference between your regular 10 cups of coffee across a month to maybe four. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, I want to get some of that 50 bags. And then all of a sudden it, it triggers that way of life where you're really assessing things based on weight. What does this look like in 20 years time or 10 years time? And you know what, the thing is that the real issue with it is cause I think it's so hard to like picture it, right? Like this is why it's a good example, right? A coffee think, how's one coffee a, a week or whatever I spend one coffee a week gonna change my life that much, right? But when you actually visualize it and think about it, when it compounds over that period of time, then you can actually see the real difference. Sometimes that's why the coffee argument, I love it when people kind of show, use it to kind of show how small it, that contribution is. What we need to do is yeah. do more of what you've done right there, right? And actually show us what the impact over the long term is because really that's when you see how a small thing, yeah. just like a small seed that's planted becomes a huge tree, right? And for those who are saying, oh, I'm not a coffee drinker, neither am I. My vice is like, like m and white chocolate chip cookies, for example, <laughs> completely random. But point being is there's money that all of us waste to some degree that if we just put aside to just investing and thinking about end of goal planning, it can make our lives a whole lot better. Love that. And on that note, that's been another episode of Money Matrix. If you like what you've heard, subscribe, like, comment. So we can keep on giving you this great content. I'm your boy Seb. I'm your boy Emilio. And I'm Mickey.
Let's go, Money Matrix.